everyone and welcome for today's video. I must say, I'm pretty much excited about this one, because it's something I've never done before. For this video and the next coming I cooperated with Let's Resin, they asked me if I want to test some of their products and have a look at their homepage. Of course I want it! <laughs> so I had a look and was really curious about these pendants, which you are going to see in this video here, and about a resin pyramid mold which I've never done before. I wanted for ages, but I just didn't have a mold for it. So they did send me both items. And along with those, they also sent me some silicone stirring sticks, which are pretty handy because you can reuse them as often as you like. It's great. And some yeah, kind of scraping tools, which are really cool as well. But first things first, let's come to this project here. As you have seen already when I hovered over it with my camera, they sent me these wooden sticks. It's like broken wood, which is the base of the pendant. In this package there comes these plastic sheets and some sanded paper. Now you might wonder what do we do with it. So pretty simple. You're going to need these sheets of plastic to make your mold actually. So you basically just put them on your desk, use a cutter knife and cut out your mold. And as you can see in the video you're not going to cut through the plastic. So there's just more like a little scratch on the surface of the plastic so that you can bend it in a 90 degree angle, preferably. If you have done this a couple of times it is pretty easy and once you have yeah, all your sides you can just cut it through and use some tape to tape it together. So pretty much what you can see here in the video. <laughs> Something that I have learned when the entire project was finished, make your molds as accurate as you can. So take your time with it. The better you make a mold, the easier your life is going to be in the end. Because less sanding is needed. As the process is the same for each of these wooden bases, I will just quick forward everything for you. Once I had all my molds finished, I figured this was the easy part. <laughs> but let's continue with the second phase, mixing the resin. Let's Resin actually did send me some of their resin, which never really arrived. So blame the delivery guys, it was lost in transit. It still shows to be on the plane since two months now? I don't know. So I guess it will not arrive, so I took the resin that I had at hand, but it would have worked the same way I guess. When it comes to coloring the resin, I wanted to go a bit fancy. So I decided to use some alcohol inks, some acrylic inks, some pigments, like glitter ones, some gold leaf and some silver leaf. So I basically took everything out of my storage that I had available. I wanted to see how it looks in dependence and if I can make it work after all.
So as you can see, I mixed up everything into smaller cups and put it into my molds. This is the point why I mentioned earlier, make sure that your mold is as accurate as can be, <laughs> because if not, you will have yeah, a difficult time at this point. But mine worked out pretty much okay. I experimented a bit to get the look that I wanted. I somehow tried to achieve a transition look from a darker pigmentation towards a really clear one, because bottom line I wanted these broken edges of wood to be visible in the end, as the resin should be clear there. I did a so-so job, but you will see in the end. Something that I really wished for having is a vacuum chamber, because I did not get rid of all the air bubbles in the resin. There was no way I could heat it up, so if I did, the plastic surroundings would have yeah, become creepy, <laughs> you know. And yeah, it just was not happening that all the bubbles came out from themselves. So if I had a vacuum chamber, this would have cleared everything for me, but I don't have one. Perhaps I should build one. I have no idea how to build one, but I, I can try. <laughs> we will see. I have a ton of air bubbles into all of these, which I thought might not be that disturbing. Perhaps it's cool when the light is breaking through it to give some texture and, you know, you never know. But bottom line, I wish to have them gone for good, but they're in there. Perhaps if you're going to try something like that yourself, make sure that your resin is bubble free before you pour it in there. So I probably should have waited longer. Then it was time to wait till everything is cured. Once done, removing the mold and see what came out of it. Everything was pretty nice, everything was pretty clear. Again, I had the air bubbles in there, but I realized that my molds were not as accurate as I should have made them. There was resin where I didn't want to have resin, not everything was really as angled as I wanted it to be, and bottom line, it meant more sanding for me. And sanding it was. I didn't film it here because it was really a lot of sanding, it was pretty time intense, and it was not fun. So make sure your molds are accurate. <laughs> Basically, I just went from a rougher sanding paper towards a really soft one to make as little scratches in the resin as possible. In the final phase, I reddened my sanding paper and went over there again to even smoothen it out more. And in the end, I put a varnish over it to make it look as shiny as can be and to remove any of the yeah, milkiness of the resin which happens when you sand it. So what was my final conclusion about this project? Was it fun to make? Oh yes, it was. You really, really should try it. Did I get the outcome that I hoped for? Mm, not that much. So I hoped the resin to be clearer, as I said earlier, and I didn't really get the yeah, color transition as I hoped for. And bottom line, I should have done a couple of things differently than I did during this experiment, which I mentioned earlier as well. So I hope you can learn something from my video. But of course I want to hear what you are thinking about it. If you like the concept, if you like the design, if you are going to try something like that yourself. And which one of mine you probably like the most. I could have even refined it more as my friend Corey Simpson did. I'm going to show you a couple of his results in a second. I actually think he did way better than I did. <laughs> and I really, really, really love how he did it. So I really could have gone further and make some different shapes and angles to the crystals. I could have drilled some holes in it to refine it even more like a jewelry necklace or something like that, you know? So he really did went a step further. I love what he did to them. It was a completely coincidence that he did something like that as well. We didn't talk about it. I didn't know until he showed it on his Instagram. And I really begged him to give me a chance sharing this in the video as well. So have a look at his Instagram or his YouTube, he is brilliant, I love him, and he does really, really great arts. And he really deserves a lot more followers than he has because of the arts that he's doing and because of the person he is. So everyone, I really hope you liked the project. Have a look at the Let's Resin homepage and see if there's something that you want to try, and I'm sure there is, because there is a ton of stuff that I would love to try myself. So yeah, this sums up everything. So. Leave me a thumbs up if you liked the video, if you had fun watching, subscribe to my channel if you have not done already, and if you have questions or want to leave a comment, use the comment section down below. So yeah, thank you for your time, <laughs> thank you for watching, and other than that, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day, bye bye!